Hello, I'm David Reeves, and this is the Genesis Science Report. In this report, we will talk with actor Kevin Sorbo about his role in the upcoming travelogue Against the Tide, Finding God in an Age of Science. I'll also be answering questions on the size of the universe. But first, sharks are terrifying and fascinating. They're top predators of today's oceans. At up to 20 feet long, they're big enough to tackle not only humans and seals, but even something as big as a humpback whale. But the remains we find in the fossil record make even the formidable great white look pretty puny. For years, we found fossilized shark teeth bigger than your hand. These giant teeth give the original creature its species name, megalodon, giant tooth. We've even found jaws from this species so huge that you can stand up inside of them. But like their modern counterparts, these sharks had cartilage skeletons rather than hard calcified bones. So this means that we've rarely found anything besides their teeth preserved in stone. Now we found out more about how big these early sharks probably were. Unfortunately, we haven't found a catastrophically buried complete megalodon. What we've actually done is looked at characteristics of living sharks and made predictions from their growth patterns. All of the sharks similar to the megalodon alive today continue to grow with the same basic body proportions throughout their lives. Now, this has led scientists to report that they can be confident now on the overall size of a megalodon. They tell us that one of these monsters could have easily had a 15 foot long head, a, a dorsal fin over five feet tall, a tail around 12 and a half feet high, and a total length of 52 feet. Now, it's fascinating that these scientists who tell us all living things developed by random chance still trust that the ancient world worked in the same consistent standards and ways that we observe today. We don't observe chance processes and natural selection magically developing a shark from some lower life form. Yet many biologists are convinced that all design in life can arise without a designer. How much better is it to recognize and honor the megalodon's true creator, who is great enough to invent it, but also in control of the natural world, allowing the extinction of sharks as massive as the megalodon? Personally, I'm perfectly okay with that. And that's it for our opening monologue. And now it's time for our featured product of the week. My friend Dr. Jason Lyle has written a book called Keeping Faith in an Age of Reason. If you've heard this statement before, you can't trust the Bible, it's full of hundreds of contradictions. Well, you'll find this book great not only for yourself, but also for having dialogues with a skeptic. You can pick up this title and many more resources from the Creation Superstore by visiting creationsuperstore.com or calling 931-212-7990. And now for the comment corner. Christy says, this ministry provides a solid, factual, and biblical worldview of creation and shows that there is a complex and intelligent designer. I have personally learned so much from this ministry, and it has given me a desire to learn more about our earth and beyond. Thank you so much for those kind words, Christy. And one more from Amy. Amy says, our eight-year-old just received his first Creation Club magazine. I wish you could have seen his excited and surprised facial expressions and heard his sweet little gasp. He loves it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Amy. Our free bi-monthly Creation Club magazine goes out to over 10,000 households in America and is a great tool for anyone with a passion for creation science and God's Word. And now for this week's ministry update. Our video series, Wonders Without Number, is now available in digital download on our website, creationsuperstore.com. With 100 titles, this ever-growing series has been a powerful eye-opener for many and also airs every weekday at 6 p.m. on METV in Israel on the largest cable provider in the Holy Land. Again, you can check out all of our resources online at the Creation Superstore. Now, as a nonprofit, we do exist because of God's calling on our lives and your prayers and support. Everything we do, all of our ministry outreaches, they're designed to educate, to encourage, and an uplift while all pointing back to Christ. Consider becoming a monthly donor right now. Your tax-deductible donations allow us to continue this work. So if you want to help us expand this material's reach, just visit davidreeves.com give or call 931-212-7990 to pledge your support today.
Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube and our Facebook channels and visit our website to join our community and subscribe for our free magazine and email updates. Leave your comments and share this video with all of your family and friends. And this week's question comes from Vukosart on TikTok. They ask, why did God create the universe so huge if there isn't any other life than ours? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, first off, we have to remember why God created the universe to start with, the heavens to start with. Uh, you've probably heard me say this before. Psalm 19.1 tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God. It says that the firmament shows His handiwork. It says that day into day utters speech and night after night shows knowledge, but there's no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So the heavens are there to proclaim, to shout God's glory. The earth is specifically created for habitation. Uh, Isaiah 45 says, Thus saith the Lord, God Himself, who formed the earth and made it, He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. The heavens are there to proclaim His glory. The earth is here for our habitation. Now we have a remarkable amount of life here on this earth. It's so amazing the number of creatures. And then of course humankind is very special. The Bible doesn't specifically say that there's no other life throughout the universe. Uh, however, that does bring up certain theological issues like, um, well, did God send His only begotten Son to many, many other planets throughout the universe to save them? Uh, so there, there are theological questions that arise. The important thing to remember is that the universe is specifically created just to proclaim God's magnificence, His grandeur, and that's what it does. Every time I see these galaxies and these nebula and these uh, star clusters, all of these things throughout the universe, I'm amazed at the color, at the design, at the complexity, uh, at what it screams, because it screams that you are no accident, that you are not star stuff, the result of 14 billion years of chance, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I think that is so exciting. I think that is so encouraging. Well, that's the question and the answer for the week. Join in on the conversation by sending your questions via email, Facebook, and YouTube, and we will try to address them in a future program. And joining me now is the legendary Kevin Sorbo, known for his roles in Hercules, God's Not Dead, and the upcoming film Against the Tide. Welcome, Kevin. Hey, it's good to be here, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, I always got to throw in Andromeda because that was my second series for five years, and I do not want to dismiss 80 hour work weeks for five years. It was a good show. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, I do just have to say that I, I grew up watching you uh, play these parts on TV. And while that was great, listen, I noticed, Kevin, that you've chosen to lend your face to a lot of Christian films over the years. Why are you so passionate about those types of films? Well, you know, I did. <laughs> You know, Andrew Breitbart, to start the blaze, he said years ago, the politics is downstream from culture. Who runs the culture? Well, Hollywood does. And you see the kind of movies coming out, not only be a prude about it, but, you know, there's a lot of sex, a lot of violence, a lot of anger, a lot of divisiveness. We have enough of that playing out in real world right now. And Walt Disney said back in the 50s, movies and television will influence the youth. And we certainly see that right now as well. So uh, in 2010, a good friend of mine, Dallas Jenkins, who's Jerry Jenkins' son, who wrote, Jerry Jenkins wrote the Left Behind novels, um, I came to me with a script called What If? And um, he, he said, well, I want you to read it so you think about it. And I read it and I said, who's playing Pastor Ben? He said, well, I got these guys. I said, no, I'm playing it. He goes, man, I can't afford you. Um, I said, I don't care. I, I, don't pay me. Let me I want to do this movie. And that really kicked it off 10 years ago. What If? is the same writers who did God's Not Dead a couple years later. But I think What If's even a better movie. But that really opened the door for me to want to do movies that had a good message. Not necessarily faith-based. I don't like that term that much. I call them family-friendly with positive messages. And uh, so really the last 10 years, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Movies that are wonderful movies, but we, go, we have to rely on word of mouth for these movies to get out there. We don't have a $100 million uh, advertising budget like they do for Pirates of the Caribbean or Avengers. You know, we got we to gotta hope that people that want these movies, and there's plenty of them out there, um, they will support these movies when they come out and then tell other people about them. Absolutely. Well, okay, so it's clear from your Twitter feed that you're unashamed to also talk about your conservative values. That well, seems yeah. to be extremely rare in Hollywood these days. But, you know, when I think about conservative values, I think about things like pro-life, pro-science, pro-Christian. And I say to myself, why would these views be so hated? But 
I guess my question to you is, has your conservatism been difficult when interacting with your Hollywood peers over the years? Well, I never really interacted with them anyway. I wasn't much of a Hollywood guy, to be honest with you. Uh, we left California two years ago. We live in Florida. There's such a mass exodus out of that state because it's just gone insane. But I, I find it sad for an industry that screams for tolerance and screams for freedom of speech. It's such a one-way street because uh, I have friends that have opposite points of view from religion or politics, whatever it may be. We're still friends. I don't know why we just can't have civil discussions about this. I mean, who's out there doing the rioting? Who's destroying public and private property? It's not the conservatives out there that do, are doing it right now. So, um, you know, it, it's weird that we have such a, a culture now that's turned into a secular culture and it's turned into a culture that they, they don't like who they are, they don't like their lives, they don't like the jobs they have if they have a job, uh, they don't like the relationships they have, they don't have it. I'm curious, were these people raised with a single parent, with both parents, what kind of what kind of upbringing did they have? Because if any of these people had biblical values in their lives, they would not be doing what they're doing in the streets in all our major cities right now. There's just no way this would be happening. That's a great point. Now in the new film, Against the Tide, Coming out in theaters, you travel to the UK to discuss the suppression of Christianity within the scientific community. Can you tell me just a little bit more about this upcoming movie? Um, well, first of all, it comes out November 19th, 20th, and 23rd. We got three days of a Fathom event, which is unusual. Usually Fathom is a one-day event, so uh, we're blessed to have that. People need to go to againstthetide.movie. That's againstthetide.movie. Look at the link, put in your zip code, it'll show what theaters near, near you. We're in 700 screens across the country. I spent three weeks in Oxford, England with John Lennox. He's a retired math professor there. He holds five different doctorates, speaks what, half a dozen languages. We shot three weeks there and two weeks in Israel. And um, I'm, I'm the on-camera guy, but also a narrator guy, but the real star of the show is John Lennox. He's an amazing man. He's debated all the great atheists of the world, like Dawkins and Hitchens. And um, it, it's through this journey with John that he shows how in a scientific world God can be proven. And uh, I think people will find this amazing. He's an apologist. Uh, he's one of the biggest ones out there in the world that we have right now as, in terms of the scholar part of uh, apologetics. And this documentary would be a great bullet point documentary for Christians to have um, more ammunition to really defend their faith against people that want to attack them all the time. I don't get why Christianity is being attacked so much, but uh, you know the media and uh, movies and TV I think have lent a very uh, a very big part of that revolt, and I'm still trying to figure out why. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out why as well. Without giving too much away, you don't stop at just tackling mainstream science in the documentary. Will we also see some archaeological evidences, some historical evidences in the Holy Land as a part of this? Oh, no question. I think that's why John wanted to go there. He said, let's go there, basically walk in the footsteps of Jesus and find out where he went. We went to all kinds of archaeological digs. Um, you know, the people that look at the Bible as a myth, I did another documentary that came out about four years ago called um, uh, uh, Exodus, Proof of Evidence, that Tim Mahoney produced. He spent 10 years in Egypt to prove through archaeological digs that the Exodus happened, and he ends up proving it. So every time you prove anything in the Bible, it drives atheists crazy. Um, it's one of my favorite lines in God's Not Dead, and it didn't come from me. It came from the college student that I'm tormenting for his belief in God. And he says to me, why do you get so angry about something you don't believe in? And I... I I find that same thing. So um, it, it, I think people will find this incredibly educational. I hope people of all faiths or non-faiths, I mean, atheism is a faith. I mean, they have a stronger faith than most Christians, I think. You know, to believe in absolutely nothing is really quite amazing to me. Um, I, all I have to do is look at the stars or look at the, you know, the mountains that we have on this planet and go, well, somebody started this and it wasn't you and it wasn't me. You bring up a good point because you see, when I admit I'm a Christian, I admit I have faith, but when you contrast atheism versus Christianity, atheism is a blind faith because there is no explanation as to our existence, no scientific explanation as to our existence. Oh, and they say science all the time, but that's all I get from people. I go, well, it's science. And I go, okay, and then how, is he, how do you prove it in science? And then they scratch their head and go, you're wrong, and walk away. So yeah. I, I think this documentary, well, people will find it very fascinating. I think they'll find it incredible. And um, I got to get another plug in here. I've, I've just gotten this documentary world more and more. And I have the number one documentary right now streaming on Amazon for five months called Before the Wrath. 
So go to beforetherap.com, check it out. It deals with the book of Revelation. And boy, does it feel like it's the end of the world right now. It's going on in our, not only country, in our whole world with the craziness of, of everything. It's, I, I can't wait for 2020 to be over, but I, I know they'll probably, you know, they'll spill this over in the next year as well, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, uh, there's a lot of good things out there that's happening right now. And I think one of the biggest benefits to me, one of the blessings of COVID, is a lot of people that are looking for answers, that are afraid to walk into a church because, oh my gosh, all you Christians will come and bug me. Um, they're looking for answers too. So with these, with this quarantining of healthy people at home and making them go crazy, they've been going on the computers and they've been looking at different services and different uh, pastors and sermons across the country, let alone across the world. And I, I find that amazing. My church back in California, which I still follow, um, Pastor Rob McCoy, who does a lot of work with Charlie Kirk and Turning Point, uh, all of a sudden he has thousands and thousands of people streaming in a church that usually had maybe 300 people every Sunday. So it's pretty amazing what's going on. Yeah, it's a great way to get out and witness to others that typically would not be. Uh, you're true, and you're bringing up a lot of good names too, because uh, you mentioned our mutual friend Tim Mahoney, uh, yep. and you mentioned several other documentaries. Great work that you're doing in that field. And I might mention one of the things that I appreciate that both you and Dr. Lennox pointed out in this upcoming documentary is that there are these repeating patterns that point to not only intelligent design throughout the universe, but to a specific designer. So many people stop at intelligent design, but we're talking about the God of the Bible. Do you, do you have any thoughts of the issue of some intellectuals who claim, yes, there's a designer, but maybe it's, maybe it's aliens? Well, um, you know, it's that question, chicken or the egg, right? I mean, yeah. you could say it's aliens, but then somebody had to create the aliens, right? And I know people say, who created God? That's a question that really none of us can answer straightforward. All I have to say is, you cannot get something from nothing. You can't. Prove to me how you get something from nothing. There's a great old joke where a bunch of scientists say, we can create life. So we don't need you anymore, God. And he says, oh, really? Okay, go ahead. He says, all we need to do, we'll start with some dirt. God says, no, 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 make your own dirt. You know, <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's a great debate, and I love having the debate. I don't get angry about people having point of view debate and I think that's what freedom of speech is all about and we need to keep that because we're losing that in our country as well but I hope people go check this movie out once again it's it's against the tide dot movie I think you'll find it fascinating um, you, you don't have to be a person I've had people come up to me from my movies like let there be light and, and soul surfer God's not dead what if and they say hey you know I'm, I'm an agnostic or an atheist I don't really believe the way you believe but I found the movie interesting and had some good points to me that's a win it's just just go out and check out the movie because I know a lot of Christians out there they feel nervous about asking other people hey you want to come to my church service because they think they're going to get pushed back but it does nothing to ask somebody hey do you want to go see a movie with me so I think people will find watching movies is, is an easier way to really break that ground and break that ice to get people to get a little more involved and get a little more educated out there it's a great witnessing tool. You're right. Yeah. Uh, finally, if you have one wish for our future generations, mm -hmm. what would it be? You know what? Don't let anyone set your limitations. I think that a lot of people get their bullet points from the mainstream media. They, they look at what's coming out in movies. You know, you and I and anybody watching this right now, we're not Thor. We're not Superman. We're not Spider-Man. It's great to watch movies like that, but I want to do movies that make people think, make them laugh, make them cry. Movies that have hope, redemption, um, love in them. And I'm, I'm hoping that people can go to these movies and look at that and go, you know, I can relate to that person or I know somebody like that. And that's the reason I want to be an act in the first place oh so many years ago when I was just a kid. So I'm hoping people give other things a chance and not just look at one way in life and look at both sides of the issue. I'm, I'm a firm believer and looking at everything. So I hope people start doing that. Thank you so much for being with me today, Kevin. My pleasure. Go to kevinsorbo.net. kevinsorbo.net. You can also catch Kevin's new documentary, Against the Tide, in select theaters for three nights. This is very unusual. This November, check out their website for more details. And that's it for the Genesis Science Report. Until next time, I'm David Reeves, and I want to remind you to keep looking up because truly, the heavens declare the glory of God.